We had a trade plus Yusei Kikuchi signed with the Angels. Let's discuss on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT and 5 on Wednesday, November 27th. Happy Thanksgiving Eve. I am Frank Sample, joined by Chris Towers. And last week we had a trade. The Reds acquired Brady Singer from the Royals in exchange for Jonathan India and Joey Weimer. If we're being honest, this isn't the greatest trade for fantasy all around. Uh, if you look at Jonathan India, he's been a productive player, but he's going from uh, a great hitter's park to a pretty bad one. And the inverse for Brady Singer, who's going from a big park to a really terrible pitcher's park. Uh, Chris, your thoughts here on the trade uh, Singer being swapped out here for India and Joey Weimer? I would say it's more bad for Singer than anything else because he is a guy who tends to get hit very hard and uh, got away with it last year, but I don't think that'll happen in Cincinnati. So I, I'd be surprised if Brady Singer was all that fantasy relevant outside of streaming and good matchups in 2025. India, I'm not so convinced it's bad for him. It's a bad park for home runs, and I, I do think it's safe to project a downgrade in home runs from Jonathan India, maybe from 15 to 12 uh, in a projection, but I do it's a good park for singles, doubles, and triples. It's a good park for avoiding strikeouts. Hitters tend to see the ball very well in Kaufman. So I do think you could see an improvement from that 248 average to something like 275, 280 on the higher end of a projection. And at the top of what should be a pretty good lineup, certainly, you know, at least the very top of the lineup is going to be good. So I could see a world where Jonathan India hits 275 with 12 homers and 15 steals and scores 90 runs and is useful in a Brandon Nimmo e kind of way. So I, I I actually think maybe arrow pointing slightly, slightly up for India after this trade. Yeah, it's just a, a change in the shape of his production, right? Where yeah. you know less uh, home runs, but a little bit more batting average. Hitting ahead of Bobby Witt and Vinny Pasquantino and Salvador Perez, he should score a lot of runs. So if he's healthy, I think there's a high floor. And I think uh, Jonathan India is someone who could be drafted as a middle infielder in 12-team Roto Leagues or deeper. You know, runs are very hard to find in fantasy. That is a, like, I, I always do a, an article, like, category specialist for every category. And runs are, like, the hardest to just be a specialist in because you score runs from home runs, you score runs from getting on base. Those ten, those players tend to be good already. Finding a guy who's not drafted high but who could score a lot of runs is actually pretty hard, and Jonathan India could be one. So that, he's got that going for him. Let's talk about Yusei Kikuchi, who signed a three-year, $63 million deal with the Angels. The Angels, who have been uh, pretty busy so far early on in the offseason. Uh, the biggest question for Kikuchi, Chris, and this would have been regardless of where he signed, mm -hmm. can he maintain the gains that he made with the Astros last season. So 10 starts in Houston, a 270 ERA, a .93 whip. He upped that slider usage, and we saw huge strikeout potential from Yusei Kikuchi. Uh, you know, from a, a park factor standpoint, Angels you know, does allow a little bit more home runs, so that could be a arrow pointing down here. But what do you think about Kikuchi moving over to the Angels? Yeah, the thing about Kikuchi is he's always been a tinker. Like th there's never been more than a couple of months where you have the same version of you say Kikuchi. Sometimes it's, uh, you know, I think he introduced a new slider or a, a new changeup this year. He's gone from being super curveball heavy to super slider heavy at times. He's gone super changeup heavy. He's had a cutter in there at various points. I think last year he started throwing a sinker for the first time ever. So it's just, there are always different versions of you say Kikuchi and that's made projecting him very difficult because if you remember, he wanted a really good run at the end of the 2023 season as well. Was, you know, a, a really good pitcher in the second half there as well after making some changes. And then it didn't carry over to the first half of 2025. The one thing that has always been a constant is Yusei Kikuchi. When he gets hit, he gets hit really hard. And so I think there's always going to be some inflation to that ERA. He's not someone I expect, even if he had gone back to Houston, a 270 ERA from. You know, I, I think it's more like, Best case scenario, you're hoping for mid threes and a bunch of strikeouts. That's probably still where I am. You know, if I had to put a projection, it would be like 370, 380, decent, you know, good strikeout rates, 
Whip is okay. I guess he loses some wins with the Angels, but they should be close to 500. They should be com- competent. Uh, and hey, decent chance he gets traded at the trade deadline this year also. The early NFBC ADP through 61 drafts for Kikuchi is 141.4. He's right between Jared Jones and Kodai Senga. That feels a little bit high to me. I feel like maybe he's closer to 160, 175-ish for Kikuchi. So we'll see if that's reflected in his ADP moving forward. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5, and we will be back again on Saturday. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.